It was, Bill Gray suggested 40. Okay, let's call the Urbana, Urbana City, City Council meeting to order, please. Interesting. Yeah. Would the clerk please call the roll? Ms. Barnes? Here. Mr. Bowersox? Here. Ms. Shenoweth? Present. Mr. Lewis? Here. Mr. Roberts? Here. Mr. Smythe? Here. Ms. Stevenson? Present. Mayor Pressing? Here. First item is approval of minutes of February 19th and February 26th. Are there any additions or corrections to those minutes? Move Motion by Ms. Barnes, um, seconded by Mr. Smythe. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. Okay, additions to the agenda. All right, none, so we'll continue. Communications, is there anyone who would like to address the Urbana City Council? Sir, would you like to come up? Have you filled out a little form? Okay, you can just give it to the clerk and have a seat. And uh, please give us your name and address. Uh, my name is Jude McKenna. I uh, live at 2 3 uh, I am working with State Representative Naomi Jacobson. I just wanted to introduce myself and say I look forward to meeting and working with everyone. The uh, office is at 206 North Randolph, Suite 120, and the phone number is 373-5000. And uh, if you kind of feel anything you need to discuss, that's the number, and I will be here. So thank you. Okay, thank, thank you. you very much. Is there anyone else? Okay, um, we did get a letter um, addressed to Phyllis Clark, uh, people who are concerned about snow removal. I've asked Bill Gray to look into uh, what it would take to get the sidewalks cleared. Our, our staff did a wonderful job clearing the streets, but we do have problems with sidewalks. So um, we'll be coming back with a report. And this might take some community involvement. Maybe we could organize it by neighborhoods or something, but I think we do need to act on um, sidewalks. Did you want to say anything, Phyllis, about this? I received a phone call uh, from, um, I don't know how you pronounce her name, but uh, she's at 714 West Michigan Avenue uh, in Urbana requesting that um, this issue be brought before the city council so that they can understand and realize that it's a wonderful job that the city does on clearing the streets but once uh, a community person has cleared their driveway and sidewalk that that snow is then pushed back up there and they have to go out and do it again uh, one of the concerns that she had is that when she did call public works uh, about the issue she was told that you know to go on and spend a couple of more hours out there and dig it out and then you should be okay. She felt that that was not the appropriate thing to uh, say to her as a community person, uh, a female, and she was also concerned about seniors who might have uh, been out, you know, digging themselves out and then having this issue happen all over again. So that's one of the reasons why she wrote this two-page letter and uh, would like for the council and the mayor to um, you know, kind of look into this and possibly Mr. Gray can uh, handle the situation for her. Yes, I did ask Bill Gray. I mean, I'm one of the people that's been trying to walk on the sidewalk, so I'm pretty aware of what the problem is. Um, Mr. Roberts. Also, uh, I was listening to uh, NPR, National Public Radio, over the weekend, and I heard that there was a, um, a civil case that was uh, um, conducted in um, I think it was a circuit court um, or a district court in um, uh, Indiana having to do with litigation or possible uh, legal repercussions of those people who um, uh, shovel their sidewalks as a good intent or good Samaritan action within a city and then uh, there's an accident or would there be an accident and who would be responsible. And my understanding is that the circuit court found that there would be no liability to the citizens who um, shoveled their sidewalks. So I think that um, because um, shoveling sidewalks, there has been a question about the legality issue, and um, there, it's been considered in sort of a, a, jur 
a generic sort of sense that um, if you don't do anything, you're not liable for anything. I think that it looks like this, the courts now are um, starting to make litigation on that, and I think it would be useful for us to have information from our lawyer during that discussion. Yes, we will get legal information and we'll get discussion in neighborhood groups and we'll have a big public discussion on it. So maybe the next time it snows, we'll be ready. Anyone else? Well, I do have a proclamation to read. Um, whereas the University of Illinois will be celebrating International Education Week in March 2007, uh, it's coordinated by the Office of International Programs and Studies. It's a cross-campus interdisciplinary committee, which has become increasingly dynamic in the last four years. They've done academic and cultural events. They have um, recognized that international education is critical for our future welfare. And whereas we live in an increasingly interconnected world and improving global literacy among our citizens contributes significantly to our nation's foreign policy and economic competitiveness. And whereas this year's theme, seeing eye to eye around the world, presents an opportunity to promote cultural exploration and celebrate the diversity of the Champaign-Urbana community. Um, now, therefore, we, Gerald J. Schweihart, Mayor of the City of Champaign, and Laurel Pressing, Mayor of the City of Urbana, do hereby de proclaim the week of March 9th through 18th, 2007, as the first annual observance of International Education Week in the cities of Champaign and Urbana, Illinois. Are there any other communications? Okay, we'll move on. Um, under old business, we have um, ordinance number 2007-01-003, the ordinance to repeal section 13-3 of our planned unit developments. Um, we have run into a problem on having study sessions. Um, there's a memo I've given you from Jack Waller. Did you want to address this, Robert? Um, Okay, well, if you want to, you can, but basically what we're going to do is try to postpone this. Uh, it was Jack Waller's uh, recommendation that rather than just setting a date of next week or two weeks from now, we postpone it indefinitely to make sure that we have a chance to really go over it and we'll get it back as soon as possible. So is there a motion to do that? Okay, motion by uh, Mr. Lewis and seconded by Ms. Barnes. Is there any discussion? Mr. Roberts. Um, having only just received uh, Mr. Waller's uh, comments just a couple minutes before the meeting started, and I read through them, um, uh, of course I want the, um, the, the ordinance as we do pass it to meet all the requirements of the Zoning Commission and, you know, legal status. It seemed to me that there might have been some confusion and and that maybe Mr. Waller's comments about the study session might have been been referring to an earlier version of the uh, ordinance because having read it, um, you know, last night, it seemed like uh, some of the features that he brings up uh, weren't actually part of the ordinance itself. So I guess there's some confusion, and of course I want to have time to have this come out right. But I think that the the um, PUD proposal is a really strong one, and I would hate to see it um, postponed indefinitely. So I have some concern what does indefinitely mean. I think it's something that we should proceed on. There's only one or two items, aspects of it that are being held up, and I'm hoping that we can solve those quickly. I think um, his intention was not to set a time that's too soon, but to proceed with all deliberate speed. Yeah, well, let's do that then. Any other discussion? Okay. I was just going to okay. add, just for clarification, just to uh, be clear, we'd like to bring it back as, as soon as possible. Um, but what we're proposing specifically is to, in light of this uh, and this court case that uh, we looked at in terms of the um, study session process, um, what we're pro proposing to do is just to keep what we have right now. In other words, a preliminary plan that goes to the Planning Commission, City Council, and then a final plan that goes to the Planning Commission, City Council, and then that would meet. We believe that would meet the intent of uh, of uh, what uh, was found in the 
what was held in that Clarion versus the Village of Lyle case. Um, but the good thing is that all the standards would be improved. We would have vastly improved standards, so that would be that would be wonderful. Okay, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, reports of standing committees, the Committee of the Whole. From last week, um, ordinance number 2702027, an ordinance revising the January 2007 amendments to the benefits program uh, for the committee I so move. I second that. Motion by Mr. Smythe, seconded by Mr. Roberts. Any discussion? Uh, if not, uh, would the clerk please call the roll? Ms. Barnes? Yes. Mr. Bowersox? Yes. Ms. Shenoweth? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. Roberts? Yes. Mr. Smythe? Yes. Ms. Stevenson? Yes. Okay, that ordinance is carried. Uh, Mr. Smythe? Ordinance number 2007-02028, an ordinance amending Schedule H of Section 2393 of the Urbana Local Traffic Code requiring stop signs at a certain intersection. This is at Orchard Street and Oregon. For the committee, I so move. Second. Motion by Mr. Smythe, seconded by Ms. Barnes. Any discussion? If not, would the clerk please call the roll? Ms. Barnes? Yes. Mr. Bowersox? Yes. Ms. Shenoweth? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. Roberts? Yes. Mr. Smythe? Yes. Ms. Stevenson? Yes. That ordinance passes. Mr. Smythe. Ordinance number 2007-02026, an ordinance approving and authorizing the execution of an intergovernmental agreement with the Urbana and Champaign Sanitary District for design engineering services for the East Urbana Interceptor Project. For the committee, I so move. Second. Motion by Mr. Smythe, seconded by Mr. Lewis. Any discussion? Would the clerk please call the roll? Ms. Barnes? Yes. Mr. Bowersox? Yes. Ms. Shenoweth? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. Roberts? Yes. Mr. Smythe? Yes. Ms. Stevenson? Yes. Okay, that ordinance passes. Mr. Smythe? And the last item is resolution number 2007-02004R, an intergovernmental agreement for negotiation of the renewal of cable franchises with Insight Communications Midwest LLC. For the committee, I so move. Second. Okay, motion by Mr. Smythe, seconded by Ms. Chinoweth. And uh, because this would involve some money, um, Mr. Waller has suggested that we have a roll call. Is there any discussion? Mr. Mr. Bowersox? Um, yeah, I guess I wonder, Mayor, are there any staff joining you to speak to this one? I have some questions about the issue that we were emailed about, which is the issue of um, of the PEG funding and how we pay for it, and also about the process, about how Champaign and Urbana will work together. Um, so I guess I wonder if I should address those now and if you have the answers to some of those or how, okay. Okay, why don't you go ahead? Well, so the first question is just the issue of how, how we fund it. I know we all, I assume we all got the same email from um, the person who is one of our negotiators on the team raising the question about how exactly we're paying for the consulting services to do the negotiation, which is what this intergovernmental agreement is for, and raising the question about whether or not it's really in the best interest of the public to pay for it out of the PEG fee, which is saved up in the VRF over time, or, um, or whether it should come out of the city's share and not really the, the public programming share, because the public programming share is for the purpose of the public programming. Um, so I guess I wonder if other council members or if you have had any inquiries and what answers we have to that question so far. Okay, well I think that the decision to spend the money is a separate one from which pot it's going to come out of and if we're concerned about which pot we can certainly deal with that. But I think we should move ahead with the agreement. Um, that would be my recommendation. Anybody else? Daniel? It, th that was a procedural question for me. It's not in the agreement where it comes from. Um, it was just in the staff report that it would come from peg fees. It's my understanding that that's not, we're not supposed to do that with peg fees. The peg fees are really supposed to go for equipment um, and they're, they're very specifically regulated. I also don't think it's a good policy idea. So 
is what, at, at what point can we express that we feel that should come from the franchise fees that have been collected by the city? Um, how about if we pass this and then we make a motion after that to okay. say where we want it to come from? All right. Mr. Bowersox. Kramer, the one other question I just wanted to raise is, is about how the negotiations are going to go if Champaign and Urbana have a real different levels of commitment to public access. I guess in sort of looking at the current public access situation, one of the things I see is that Urbana really has a commitment to public programming being on. We're the ones who collect the PEG money, um, even though both cities have the statutory and franchise ability to, we're the only one of the two who does, and we have a station, and many people from both cities use the station here. I know there's a great show I love that's put on by somebody who lives in Champaign, and that's wonderful. We're happy to be the host for this community outpouring of community media, I think. But that does show that we have somewhat different philosophies towards it, and I wonder if we're negotiating together with Champaign, what happens in the future if 12 months from now we find that there is a different approach? Can this consultant serve both of us if we end up deciding, for example, that Urbana wants to move ahead with more public access and a standalone station, even if Champaign should decide in the future that they don't want to? And could the consultant give us advice on that, even though they might not be giving the same advice to Champaign, even though we're kind of doing this dance together? Well, there is a provision in this um, agreement that we could um, back out of it if with 14 days notice and we would only be obligated to pay up to um, that point our share so I think that we certainly have the option that if things don't um, come out the way we would like them to be and we think that Urbana has just a you know a very different philosophy than Champagne then we would be able to to do it on our own but this just sort of has a start out so maybe we can cross that bridge when we come to it Ms. Chinoweth. Just If I could respond to a couple of things, because um, I've been watching this process pretty carefully since I serve on the UPTV Commission um, and the Public Access Commission. Uh, the, the consultant will be conducting independent studies of Champaign and Urbana or discrete studies for a needs assessment. I think this is a great idea not only because I think Champaign-Urbana might have different needs, but also because Champaign-Urbana and Urbana might not, ha might not have different needs. For example, UPTV, half of the members of UPTV are Champaign residents, and we have half the population of Champaign. That, that shows a significant interest in public access from Champaign residents. Um, when Champaign City Council was poised to vote down a resolution to support public access in the franchise agreement. Over a hundred people, Champaign residents, weighed in to say they want public access and public access to be a priority. And actually, the mayor and several council members changed their vote that evening to support public access. As a result of that, so so that's significant. Um, the the third thing is that the public access study group of which I'm a part, there were folks from WILL and people from Parkland and all over the community. We did a public access study which we provided to the council. It was kind of thick. You might not have remembered every detail. But what's significant about that study is that it was both Champaign and Urbana and there was overwhelming support from, for public access, specifically from churches and nonprofit organizations. Those are the folks who don't have access to the big advertising dollars of cable channels, and so they have come out en masse. Churches have always been historically a supporter of public access throughout the country. Um, non we have a very strong nonprofit sector in Champaign-Urbana. I think we were actually one of the most organized cities in the country. There was a Time magazine study at some point, and so that means there's a lot of organizations in this community who can take advantage of it. So they spoke up talking about public access. So I just want to lay the groundwork that actually, based on the, st the, the information and history I've seen, I think the people of Champaign support public access, and I think that the city council and the mayor are starting to begin to hear that more and see that. But the second thing is that in the last franchise, as you can tell, we have a peg access with public access and Champaign doesn't that came out of that franchise. So it is possible for the different cities to end up with slightly different situations, but have one cable consultant who's helping to prepare that. So I think that addresses those concerns. 
Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, would the clerk please call the roll on resolution 2007-02-004? Ms. Barnes? Yes. Mr. Bowersox? Yes. Ms. Shenoweth? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. Roberts? Yes. Mr. Smythe? Yes. Ms. Stevenson? Yes. Mayor Pressing? I get to vote on this too? You're going to. Okay, yes. Um, did we have a motion on this? Yes. We yes. did. All right, good. Yes, we did. <laughs> kind of, it was a long time ago. All right, that carries. And there will be a follow-up motion. <laughs> oh, yes, that's right. Here we go. Mr. Let Danielle do it. Ms. Chinoweth. Okay. Um, I'd like to make a motion that we fund this um, consultant out of the um, general operatings fund, which is where the franchise money goes instead of the um, PEG VERF fund. And I second that. Okay, motion by Ms. Chinoweth, seconded by Mr. Roberts to pay this out of general operating funds instead of PEG funds. Any other discussion? Okay, I think we just need a voice vote on this. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay, that motion carries. We don't have any reports from special committees, I don't believe. Uh, reports of officers, um, Tom Carino, and then Anna. Evening, uh, you have before you our um, monthly economic development activities report. Uh, just to highlight a few items in this report, uh, Ryan Bro and I did attend the International Council of Shopping Centers Idea Exchange in Chicago at the beginning of the month. Uh, we did have some free booth space to network with developers and retailers. Um, that event was in the evening and uh, probably didn't get the activity that we would have liked. Uh, we did have a retailer stop by and several developers, so there was some activity. Uh, the real action was the next day when uh, the retailers had their booths set up and we were able to work the room. And uh, we're very excited that some retailers said they were already looking at Urbana and had already been doing some uh, site surveys in the area. Uh, and then other retailers were excited about the uh, large projects that were going on here, the Menards and the Myers projects. Uh, so there is interest in Urbana, and uh, some of those retailers, like I said, have already been here. So uh, that's very exciting, and we're getting some national uh, retail attention um, that's going to be drummed up over the next couple of years here. So that was pretty exciting. Thank you, Tom. Uh, Mr. Roberts. Uh, do When retailers are interested in Urbana, do they make a courtesy call to uh, the city offices, or do sometimes they just come in and we have no idea that they're, they're um, looking at our properties? Uh, it depends on the retailer. I would say most retailers work through intermediaries that don't necessarily divulge who their clients are. Uh, we'll get a call saying, I am a real estate consultant. I'm working for a um, general merchandise retailer looking for a site. They need this, this, and this, and then we help with their site selection, tell them about programs that are available, um, that type of thing. So most retailers won't tell you specifically that they're looking for a site. Uh, they want to maintain some anonymity because uh, they don't want to tip their um, competitors as to what sites they're looking at because then competitors can get involved bidding on those same sites or they don't want their competitors to know what markets they're looking at because again they don't want to compete um, with those retailers. So uh, they will generally um, not tell us ahead of time when they come to the city to look. Anyone else have a question? If that's it, I'd like to introduce Anna Hochholter. I believe most of you have met her, but she's going to give you a brief update on uh, what's going on as far as public arts in the city of Urbana. Thanks. Good evening. Good evening. Um, I'm glad to meet you all this evening. Um, we've put together a public arts coordinator update so you have an understanding of what I've been doing since the middle of September since I've been serving in this role. So in front of you, you should have, it's a packet that looks like this with three colorful images. Um, 
and it's an overview of what I've been doing. So the first part of my work here has been to try to understand what's going on in the city, who's doing what, what projects they're involved with in terms of the arts. Um, and I've put together a community desire list, which is at the back of your packet. And in this investigation of what people are doing in the community, I conducted many interviews and tried to have a good representation of ages and ethnicities and backgrounds. And have I, um, in the community desire list, you see that 20 people's views are represented. And when I was talking to them, I was asking them not only what they're involved with presently, but what they would like to see happen in the city of Urbana and in the community in terms of the arts. I'm also putting together an inventory of arts venues and organizations and existing visual art sculpture that's already installed. Um, so now I'm going back to the front of the page and I'll go through the rest of this update document with you. I've been researching what other communities are doing in terms of public art, um, specifically looking at Seattle, San Diego, and also smaller cities such as Elgin. And if you turn to the middle of the packet, you'll see an overview of government-sponsored public art. And this is a handout that I think is helpful because it has several quotes that are bulleted with arrows that are general, um, it gives general information about what other cities have done and, and some guiding principles. And in the middle is a general idea of definitions, both about what public art is, different selection processes other cities use, as well as different means of funding. I'm sorry I'm having you flip through the packet a lot. Um, I've also been helping to create the Public Arts Task Force, and you all successfully appointed 15 members last week, and we're all very excited about the process that's beginning. I've been assisting in creating the press releases um, and making sure people knew that this opportunity was happening. And I, I will be serving as staff for the task force. Other projects that I'm working on putting together proposals for include a pilot project that incorporates arts into the infrastructure. And this is a conceptual design for a newspaper rack. So the newspaper racks that are on the corner of Broadway and Elm have been causing a problem for public works because they're not um, secured to the ground. They fall over, they, they shift. And so we're working on a project where an artist will be incorporated into designing a solution to that problem. We're working on putting together a public arts brochure and um, a brochure of the, pro the program and a map of existing work in the city already. We're working on creating an exhibition space in City Hall where artists without a fee could display their work on a rotational basis. We're working on a sculpture initiative also. Um, additionally, I've been helping with the Historic Preservation Commission to create an art contest. Um, I shouldn't say create, it's already created. I'm hoping to get it together and, and it's happening. We're expecting about 90 students from Urbana area high schools to participate by making a one page essay on historical architecture on a specific building within the city and then to do an artwork on that building. And they'll be displayed in May and there's prize money associated with that. I'm helping with the Boneyard Arts Festival as well as the One State Arts Conference which is happening in May at the Cranert Center. And lastly, something that you all should be aware of is you're invited to join the Urbana Business Association and 40 North members in an event. You all, in your packets, not in the one that I gave you, but in your folders, I believe, you have a postcard. And this postcard is an invitation to join um, UBA 40 North to begin collaborating on how to promote the arts in Urbana. The date and time. The date is March 14th and the time is 5 to 7 p.m. and that will be at Silver Creek Restaurant in Urbana. Yes. 
And does anyone have questions? Mr. Smith. I know. Thanks for putting this all together. Uh, it's a great start, and nice to have it in one summary like this. Um, I have uh, one thought. I know the library is interested in um, uh, having some space that uh, could be made available to local artists and stuff, uh, local galleries. Uh, so if you would touch base with the director or uh, this is the assistant director of the library, I'd appreciate it. Um, They've started some stuff as well, but you might as well be, you, should, you ought to be in the loop on that. And then um, I thought it was interesting, the, the report both in the paper and uh, on, uh, on President, U of I President White's uh, recent discussion of architecture and art in Columbus, Ohio, um, which I, I don't know if other people saw that or not. And uh, I thought that was interesting because he had some very positive comments to make on art uh, in daily life. And uh, I was very encouraged. Uh, he's very encouraging of that sort of thing, and uh, uh, and he pointed to Columbus, Ohio, as, as one example. Okay. So thank you, Charlie. Would you say what the article was on Columbus again? Um, it was a, a summary of a recent talk that President White did. I think it was in yesterday's paper, uh, News Gazette, uh, in the arts se and entertainment section. But I, I'm not sure. I've read a bunch of stuff, and I'm not sure where I where I saw that exactly. Thanks, Danielle. Lynn, I think. Um, go ahead. Um, it might be nice uh, to also consider bike racks as an artistic endeavor, as opposed to the way that they're often designed, and uh, for those to be considered um, something that the city could uh, provide in some of our what we want to call our like our downtown and then also <clears throat> our other business district which we're working on which is Philo Road um, you know we might want to see if we can come up with a way to fund that type of thing there to draw um, to have better access to locking up your bike near some of those businesses and have them look nice as well. Danielle? You know, one thing um, Bruce and I have discussed but I think it it hasn't necessarily um, we haven't pursued it as much as I'd like to see, which is that we have a whole bunch of beautiful downtown street lights, and the UBA has a banner program, and there's been some participation in that banner program, but there's a lot more street lights than there has been, per been participation. I'd like to see us c use the fact that we have lots of banner spots to do a, a banner contest or to pull in um, uh, people to produce art for those banners. They don't always have to be communicative or advertising, publicity related. could also be to add color, especially as the spring comes and things lighten up a little bit. Um, and I've talked to the MTD, and I don't know if you've had a chance to talk to them recently, but I'd strongly uh, suggest sitting down and talking about possible collaboration in terms of MTD stops mm -hmm. and taking advantage of the fact that folks are there and also there tends to be, especially in downtown, a lot of children who um, use the downtown stop. And so if there was some kind of child-oriented public art piece that was engaging and that took advantage of some of the MTD infrastructure. So if you get a chance to talk to them, that would be great. Anyone else? Well, thank you very much, Anna. Thank you. The, this process is just beginning, so we're all excited about what is yet to come. Thanks. Um, now we're on to new business. Ordinance number 2007-03-030, an ordinance approving a special use permit to allow the installation of an antenna equipment enclosure for an existing telecommunications tower in the B1 Neighborhood Business Zoning District. Robert Myers. This is a request by Insight Inc., which is, who is acting as an agent for T-Mobile Communications, and they're requesting a special use permit to allow an equipment enclosure, uh, which would serve an antenna co-location on existing communications tower at um, 1110 West Main Street. This is the northeast corner of Main Street in Goodwin. And just to be clear, the antenna itself um, can be approved administratively. But if the equipment enclosure, which is essentially three cabinets, metal cabinets that we're talking about, about six feet high, because they're less than uh, 100 feet from a residential property, 
those would need to be approved by a special use permit. So that's what we're here to talk about tonight. Just so you'll have a sense, this property is uh, WILL property. There's already a tower there. There's already satellite dishes next door to it. There's a, uh, an apartment building. So if you look at Exhibit G, the site photos, those photos um, tell you the relationship between the property and the <clears throat> apartment building next door. So um, what they're proposing to build specifically are up to three outdoor cabinets, what's called a metal ice bridge, which is a covering over some cables, and also uh, an electric meter. They're proposing to put a six-foot tall wood fence around their 20 feet by 20 feet lease area. Um, in terms of the special use permit requirements, <clears throat> First, uh, that the proposed use is conducive to the public convenience at this location. I think it's helpful to keep in mind that our telecommunications ordinance, what we really want to do is encourage co-location. Rather than everyone have their own tower with their own antenna on it, you know, uh, we're trying to um, avoid proliferation of towers and get businesses to cooperate and go on a tower together. And that's what they're doing in this case. <clears throat> Um, second, there's the question about would it be injurious or detrimental to the district in which it's located. And um, city staff, uh, in city staff finds that it's not going to change the essential character of the neighborhood. If you look at Exhibit G, you'll see that there's already a tower there, there's already satellite dishes, etc. so it won't change the essential character of it. <clears throat> so in summary, um, the proposed use would be conducive to the public convenience. Um, it would not be injurious to the public welfare. And um, at their February 22nd meeting, the Urbana Plan Commission voted seven in favor and one against to recommend that the City Council approve the request. Uh, city staff and Plan Commission are both recommending approval of the special use permit. Uh, with two conditions, I'm sorry. One, that it shall conform the attached site plan. Second, that it will uh, obtain all necessary building permits from the city. If you have any questions about the application, I believe there's a representative of the applicant here this evening. Mr. Smith? I move approval of Ordinance 2703030, an ordinance approving a special use permit, uh, along with the two uh, special, or two conditions. special, con uh, two conditions. Motion by Mr. Smythe, seconded by Ms. Barnes. Is there any discussion? Mr. Roberts. This is directed to uh, Chief Bealey. Yeah. Wake up there, boy. I have a question for you, sir. Okay. Um, uh, the, 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 it was, it was, there was a question about uh, the um, perimeter fencing and that it would be a solid wood fence. And uh, in the plus side for it, it would uh, screen, allow the apparatus from the residences and um, the street. That's positive. And I wondered if you had any, uh, if, the, if the police department would have any concerns about a solid fence in terms of crime, since it's abutting the balconies of the um, residents, uh, apartment residents, um, next to it, and I've heard that there are there may be some instances where uh, opaque fences uh, tend to um, be d detrimental in a situation of uh, individuals hiding or you know making these kinds of um, potentially uh, uh, concerns actions of concern. So I just wondered if you had a thought about that. To begin with, I believe anything that happens on that property is University of Illinois police jurisdiction. So I can't speak for the University of Illinois. Okay. If it were mm -hmm. the Urbana Police Department, uh, I don't believe there would be a concern. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Lewis. I'd like the representative to uh, address the public's concern about health and safety issues with regard to the the antennas. We had some rel um, some residents in the area concerned about health concerns. 
by increasing um, the um, intensity of frequencies coming through the tower and the impact on neighbors in the immediate area. Could they address that? Would you um, just have a seat and give us your name and address, please? Sure. <clears throat> My name is Ray Schinkel. I'm with Insight Incorporated. I'm representing T-Mobile this evening, and their address is 8550 West Bryn Mawr uh, Avenue in Chicago, Illinois. Um, to answer your question, uh, T-Mobile purchased this license to operate uh, these frequencies. Um, the FCC has very strict guidelines on what they're on the RF exposure, um, on what these antenna facilities emit. Uh, there are over 1,500 sites in the Chicago land trading area, and that includes central Illinois, and we are operating on just about everything you can imagine, church steeples, grammar schools, retirement facilities, hospitals, uh, rooftops, anything in anywhere that we can place these antennas to eliminate the proliferation of towers. Um, we are operating well below the permissible limits that the FCC sets. In fact, we're operating at less than 5% of that limit. So um, we do not, there is no health concern risk. There are a number of web pages that I can provide where you can do your own investigation to, uh, um, and these these are very, you know, legitimate um, web pages that, you know, the scientific, uh, the, the science industry, you know, holds in high regard. FCC.com, and, and other uh, similar type of uh, web pages. So, if can I just like. ask, uh, what, what uh, microwave frequency uh, are they operating at? They're at the 1900 megahertz. So I thought, okay, thank you. have a question okay um, would the clerk please call the roll miss Barnes yes mr. Bower Sox yes miss Shanowitz yes mr. Lewis yes mr. Roberts uh, yes mr. Smythe yes miss Stevenson yes okay that ordinance passes thank you, very thank much. you. Uh, next is uh, resolution number 2007-03-005R, a resolution of protest against a proposed map amendment to the Champaign County zoning map. This is a 10-acre tract of land on the east side of North Lincoln Avenue. Robert Myers. Can we please uh, consider items two and three together? Sure. Is that okay? The no. next one is resolution number 2007-03-006R, Another resolution of protest um, for the same the same area. Same property. Mm -hmm. Right. This is <clears throat> there's two different county uh, zoning cases, and they both concern the same property. So technically, they're two different cases. That's why we, we did it that way. But the gist of it is that uh, there's a petition uh, to Champaign County to allow residential development on a 19-acre tract. And this is off of North Lincoln Avenue in the Saline Branch area. Um, the property currently has two different zoning designations, one agricultural and the other portion is zoned uh, conservation recreation. And the, the applicant, the owner, would like to zone the entire property conservation recreation. And the, the property is bordered by the Saline Branch. In, in addition to that, uh, he's applying for a rural residential overlay for the entire site, which would allow for a, a residential subdivision. Um, just so you'll know, the portion that's zoned agricultural, it had a tree farm there, and the trees are, trees are um, still there. So it would provide a, a, a nice, uh, interesting setting for residential. <clears throat> because the property is within a mile and a half of the city limits, by state law, the city um, is enabled to review zoning decisions uh, that Champaign County makes in terms of our consistency with our comprehensive plan. And our comprehensive plan, actually, for that property um, is designated, its future designation is for the majority of the site is for residential. And it's anticipated that Lincoln Avenue, when it's extended, it will extend through the northwest corner of this property, and the developer is taking this into account. 
such that, in fact, they're proposing that when they come forward in the future with a, with a subdivision, which we would review at that time, and that um, one of the outlots would be specifically set aside to allow Lincoln Avenue extension to, to go through. Uh, but just to be clear, right now what we're talking about is just the zoning portion. If, if, if they do uh, get approval for their zoning, they would come back in the future with a, with a proposed subdivision. Uh, in, in summary, um, the proposed rezoning is compatible, generally compatible with uh, the comprehensive plans, future land use designation for residential. A portion of the site will be dedicated to future Lincoln Avenue relocation. Um, the case in terms of our evaluation for uh, the LaSalle case criteria for in terms of zoning, um, the, the zoning would be acceptable because the site and surrounding area are, are generally suitable for a proposed zoning district. And also the plan commission uh, voted on February 22nd, eight in favor and none against uh, to recommend defeating a resolution of protest for this proposal. Now, just to be clear, there's two resolutions attached and if you, if you, uh, if you want to approve the resolutions of protest. If you want to protest, vote yes. <laughs> if, you, if you do not want to protest, vote no. no um, could you explain that a little mm -hmm. bit? Why are we um, getting faced with these things which are pretty confusing? Did, did the city council used to approve things? And has this, is this a recent change in the law that we're we have to vote against. I think we have to vote no yes. if we don't want to protest it, right? Right. Yeah, we're doing but exactly as we do. Why don't we do, do it the, the way past. it used to be done, which was if it comes through, we approve it? Uh, we're doing exactly as we've done in the past. It's written such that you would have the opportunity to protest if you decided to. If we wrote the if we wrote the resolution, if we wrote the resolution such that uh, you could only protest, you would only have the opportunity to do one of two things. You could either approve um, a, uh, approve a re resolution of protests or, or not approve a uh, resolution of protests. So you need to have the opportunity to protest it if you should choose to. Okay, because otherwise you'd be voting on it. If it didn't get enough votes, you'd have to have another motion to protest. Yeah, you have to come back okay. again All right. and set up a new protest. Thank you. Are there any other questions on this? All right. We need, um, we need a motion. We need a motion. I, I move in omnibus fashion resolution numbers 2007-03005R and 006R. Uh, these are resolutions of protest against the proposed map amendments. Second. second. Okay. Uh, motion by Mr. Smythe and seconded by Mr. Lewis. I have a question. Yes. Ms. Um, Chinoweth. I received correspondence from the petitioner, the Calentis uh, family, and um, their concerns regarded uh, sidewalks and street widths, et cetera, which aren't addressed in, in this. So could you just clarify, since, since I assumed that their concerns had something to do with the vote this evening, and upon looking at what we were voting on, it didn't seem to address what we're voting on. It's a different case. Those, the question is about sidewalk width, street width, uh, and the improvements will be handled when we review the subdivision itself. Okay. Uh, the uh, land uses would be approved through the zoning, and then the actual improvements would be approved through the subdivision regulations in the subdivision. Okay, so that might be something that's coming to us in the future. Right. Okay, thanks. Mr. Powersox. Yeah, and I actually, for this project, that stuff would come in the future, but I think, Danielle, that this case you're thinking of is the Debbie and Sana case, the Brickhouse Road project, which is still yes. scheduled for the 19th here in two weeks, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have two similar cases. I have too many pieces of paperwork on my kitchen table. It's time to go home and clean up then. Yeah. <laughs> okay, anyone else want to comment on this one? 
just as a remind just as a reminder so so if you're interested in protesting this and forcing the county to increase its number of votes you vote yes if you're if you're in agreement with what the plan commission says which is to allow this to move forward you vote no okay all those in favor of these two resolutions to protest please signify by saying aye all those opposed no Nay. well those resolutions were defeated so <laughs> okay um, thank you very much uh, the next is a uh, mayoral appointment um, Barbara Gladney I'd like to appoint her to be one of our representatives on the cable franchise committee to replace um, Jim Gitz so move I would like to second that. okay motion by Miss Barnes and seconded by Mr. Roberts all those in favor please signify by saying aye aye, aye. those opposed okay she's appointed I think she's very qualified um, there being no further business this meeting is adjourned thank you thank you